Hi there, this is another MagJS tutorial. It's been a while since the last one, and MagJS has definitely grown up and matured a little bit. We're at uh, 0.27. <laughs> Still sort of in a pre-beta uh, mode, but things are definitely tightening up a little bit. Um, so I wanted to kind of show a, a very popular and well-known tutorial uh, based on some of these new features that are available in MagGS. So I'm sure you are all familiar with the uh, original React tutorial um, about the comment box. Now it's not available anymore on the Facebook page, but I did find a page where it was available. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to show uh, MagGS do that comment box tutorial, okay? Well, the first thing as we always do is we go to the MagGS homepage on GitHub and we look for the boilerplates. We're going to grab uh, the most basic boilerplate and just work with that. Um, from there, let's see. Okay, so we're going to probably clean up some stuff over here. Well, let's see, we call this comment box. We could probably reuse that a bunch of places, such as here. All right, and the HTML, this is going to be our node area right around in here. Let me grab that and get rid of this. Okay, I'm just going to do some renaming now. A little house cleanup here. We're probably not going to use any of this boilerplate stuff. Boilerplates are good, kind of show you uh, some kind of basic functionality. Um, all right, I think we've got everything we need. All right, so why don't we go back to the tutorial and see exactly what it is. All right, so of course we always have, this is the famous now uh, structure think about, as I say, thinking in React. So we're going to take that structure. And I think initially they create a static version. Um, so we're probably going to do something similar to that. I don't know if we have to copy all the simplistic stuff, but we'll uh, definitely create our comment box. And I think let's look at the structure again. So we have comment box, which has comment list and then comment. Why don't we do that first, even before the comment form? Um, so why don't we look at some HTML that we're going to need. Okay, so here's a comment list. All right, why don't we just grab that quickly? Okay. Now, in MagJS, you know, uh, there's many ways to do the same thing. Okay, we get a lot of flexibility here. Now, templates or component uh, HTML um, can be anywhere. So you see here, Mag module. Now, mag module, uh, the first argument here is the ID in the current document. But if you don't have it in the current document, such as a, another server or another file, you can always load it. Um, you can do it yourself. There are plugins, add-ons, extensions, and stuff like that. Or you can call the live node itself, however you get it. By ID, you can go like that. This is just shorthand uh, for the current document ID. But you can do like this, for instance, or you could do, um, you can create your own, right? Create your own node, uh, document dot create element, right? So uh, the point I'm trying to say is that it doesn't really matter where the node exists, as long as you pass the reference to it, to the module here, okay? So with that being said, we're going to create our class list. I'm sorry, our comment list. All right, let's see. We're going to call it, uh, we're just going to reuse the names that they have. So every module has its own unique top level uh, element with its own unique ID. Okay, that's something to keep in mind. All right, so we have our we have our class, we have our comment list. I don't know why I keep it calling class list. We have our comment list. Okay, so the next thing is to connect one thing to the other. So in our top level parent module, we don't really need um, a view. The difference between a view and uh, a controller. Oh, I messed that up here. Controller. The difference between a view and a controller is really simple. Um, uh, a controller is only called once initially while the view is called on every change to the state. Okay, but th they both get sent the props. Um, so what are we gonna do is now create our component. Now the difference between a component and uh, we're gonna create our comment list component. The main difference between our, our component and a module 
is simply uh, the fact that the component is not executed right away. A module is executed right away. A component is something that you would define first and then reuse somewhere else later. And when you call the component later, you can pass in the props. See here, we're sending in the props when we first initialize it. And I'll show you that in a second. But you could also do, the, it's the same signature. You can also send in props here as well, some default ones. But let, let me show you how this works first. So in our comment box, right? Let's see the structure back over here for a second. They have a comment form. We're not going to use that right now, but here is our comment. Oh, here we go. So here's the comment box structure. Why don't we grab that guy and put him right in here? Okay, so now we can see it. Comments. We're not going to do the comment form. We're just going to grab this guy and make it some proper markup. Okay. All right, so that looks good, but we're not really wiring anything together. We haven't even defined the comment list. But we see the comment list here. So how do we get this guy, who's right now basically hidden? Again, he's only hidden at a convenience to have it here. It could be anywhere. It's a node. It's just a HTML node. And we want to put him in here. So simply do this. Um, we can do this in the controller or, or the view. We're going to do it in the controller. Now, this in the controller is equal to state. So uh, we reference the element by its matcher comment list by a tag name in this case to whatever we, we want to put there. We can put anything there. We can put uh, my comment list. Hey, I can't type. <laughs> um, we can put a list of things. Oh, there's a bunch of stuff, right? We can do all kinds of things in MagJS, but here we're going to actually reference another component. And we do that simply like this. So here, even though I haven't defined the view or the controller here, I've attached the comment list, which is down over here by its ID, um, to mag to tell it I want a component of this. It passes me back the function to call that component. And I can pass in arguments to it if I like. OK? And we would use those arguments, obviously, in the controller or the view. So this is really the most simple way to put one component into another. So you can see what is we'll just review it again. Here's our top level component called comment box. It has a tag called comment list. In our controller, we are telling it to put comment list to equal uh, a different component called comment list, which we've defined down here in the HTML. Nothing very dynamic about it at all right now. It's very static. But why don't we go three layers deep? Why don't we get our comment box? So let's see where they have that guy over here. Oh, here we go. So here's our comment guy. Let me grab him. Put him over here somewhere. OK, we'll give him an ID. Get rid of these class name things here. OK. So this is going to be very interesting. So first thing is we're going to copy this guy and create our new comment um, component. So we just have to grab the ID, put it here so it knows what to attach it to. Now the basic idea is that we want our comment in our comment list, right? Notice something here. Um, React has a thing called children, OK? And uh, MagJS has something similar. The difference is, though, is how it's applied. Let me show you what I mean. So let's create first our view inside of our comment list. And it receives two things, our state and our props. So we're just going to use a state right now. And we're basically going to do the same thing we've done to the comment list. We're going to do that um, to a comment. OK? So Inside of our comment list, we have a class called comment list. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to say state.commentList equal to our comment. And now, inside of our comment list, we have put the comment. But what we really want to do is we want to grab all this stuff. Hey, world, I'm a comment list. The children of comment list and put it into comment. 
And that's why you see this props children over here. Now, we don't have placeholders in MagJS. We use HTML. So we're just going to call that children right here. Okay. And we're saying is that I want the children of comment list to appear in the comment. So the way to do that is really simple. When you uh, define an element matcher such as comment list to a component, MagJS will take the children of content list, the thing that you assign it to, and give it to the component and make it available here. So if we go into our view state, we're not going to use the props yet. Right? And we say state.children, which is the guy down here, right? We could assign anything we want to it. Oh, that's a dirty word. <laughs> but what we're going to do is make something available from the props. And this is what MagJS is giving us. MagJS is giving us the children of whoever got assigned to it. So comment list assigned comment to itself. So the children of comment list is being sent to comment to make it available and therefore you can put it wherever you like. You can put children anywhere you like. You can put it before the author or put it back after. Now you have to think of this as something that you're in this specific case that you're going to iterate. So it's something that you'd want to be underneath every uh, comment. Maybe you would want something to you know, uh, remove the comment, mark the comment, report the comment, such as a button, you know, um, that said, you know, I like this or star it. Like it. So if we have multiple children, I'm sorry, multiple items in our comment list, multiple comments, they will each have now a button because we're creating that in our children here. Okay, it's a little complex. It's following the basic pattern of React, but it's done in a little different way. So comment is receiving it from comment list because comment list is being assigned comment. And then within comment, the props children is available and then you can put it to wherever you want. It's just a pass through really. So one thing to note is that you wanna have multiple comments. You want an array of things. So if you wanted two comments, you would simply say something like this. Oh, without the typo, of course. Now, normally you would have two items there, but now we're just getting one. And the reason is really simple because you can't say comment twice. You have to give it a key. Okay. Now, if you gave it a key, you see it already, right? But if you didn't give it a key, it wouldn't know that. So here, say this is, I'm the first one, and this guy's the second one. Now, of course, you would want something about the author in there. So for instance, you might say state dot comment author equal props dot author. And of course, you would pass that as well. But instead of hard coding an array, we probably want our data. So let's go back to the example and look for the data. Where is it? Oh, there it is. All right, so we got two comments. We have the data. We're going to grab that, simply pass it to the top level. And here we go. Let me get rid of that extra semi. A little cleanup over here. Okay, so instead of creating a hard coded array, we really want to loop through it. So this is where the props comes in. So we have to pass it, of course. So we're going to say data equals props dot data. And now we can loop through it over here. We'll just do use our map function. This is built in JavaScript, nothing special. All right, and now we're going to return a new comment instance with the item. Now notice we're only showing the last item this time, right? And also our text is not showing up. Well, that was because we haven't put that in there. But more importantly is that we need an index here. So why don't we just do that like this? We grab our index, and then we can just add it to the item. We'll say item, and remember it's key. Key is the one we have to add it to. 
and then you get both of them. This way it knows a unique instance apart. Now we also want to add that uh, text. So why don't we create a text field or we can just put it in a span. Let's say state.span equal props.text. And there we go. And maybe we can move our children somewhere a little more better. Or let's give it at least a space. Yeah, let me first make this like that. There we go. Let's see, I mean, a little more space. That's good. Even more. <laughs> All right, I think we're good. Um, so yeah, this is a really simple explanation of how to use components inside of MagJS in a really simple, clear, concise way as well as accessing children elements of a component that is being used to be replaced by a different component. So this is just static. We haven't done the form yet. We'll probably do that in a separate tutorial, but I thought this would show some of the capabilities of the latest MagJS features available. Thank you, and I uh, hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.